thank you for yet another uh, long evening. Um, we here with us we have uh, as usual Coach uh, Gary Smith. Coach, your thoughts on today's game? I thought it, I thought it mapped out pretty much how we expected. Uh, Miami started in a, in a very bright fashion and and got themselves into some very good positions early on and probably for the first time in a good while we rode our luck a little bit in those early sort of 10 or 12 minutes but warmed into the game showed some very very good signs in possession managed the ball as well as we have done away from home and and i felt got stronger and stronger the second half statistics tell us that there were some very good openings for us. And, you know, yet again, the only thing that's missing for us is that end product. Some very good chances, clean sheet, a wonderful display under the circumstances again, a long delay. I, I really can't ask for much more than this group at the moment. Thank you, Coach. We will now open the floor for questions and we will begin with a question from Dre Hills. But before we go uh, into his question, Please, just a reminder of um, connecting uh, through the chat and letting us, letting us know whether you have a question for either coach or the, play, or the players who will come after him. Um, so without further ado, Drake, your question, please. Yes, Gary, were you surprised with the chances they did have in those first, let's say, several minutes? Were you surprised that you know, not only did they miss those, but they missed them multiple times. And then came Nashville and obviously had your own chances, especially that, that set piece uh, where, where Dom pretty much had a goal if it weren't for Figal clearing it um, from the line. Were you surprised with the chances that were missed because they were, you know, quite frankly, so you know, simple, it seemed like they were destined goals? So are you telling me that theirs were more simple than ours? Is that your question? No, I'm saying, were you surprised? Well, I saw, Drake, our opportunities to score were, were every bit as clear-cut as theirs. I, I honestly wasn't surprised at how they started the game. What I was surprised about was the fact that after about 10 or 12 minutes, that pressure and those opportunities started to dissipate. And I think that was down to you know, a, bit of, a bit of resolve in our group, I mean, listen, everyone was up at six o'clock this morning. We jumped on a flight. We've, we've sat around for two odd hours to, in, a, in a storm delay. You know, we finished the game again late at night. This group is having to deal with some of the most incredible circumstances that I have ever seen. And to give up a couple of opportunities is, at this precise moment, minimal for this group. And we still had enough opportunities to either get ourselves back in the game if they'd have scored and win it in the end because they didn't. And, and that's the frustrating part. Thank you. We'll go on with a question from David Shepard with uh, uh, Speedway Soccer. Hey, Gary, question for you. Uh, with no David Akam in the 18 tonight, can you add any more clarity to his lack of selection for availability this evening? Yeah, competition. I mean, simple as that. You know, the, the group's very, very competitive. I felt as though we needed slightly different group traveling here, game after game. Um, Dave's a great lad, no issues, no, no worries with him at all. Just a, just a, a choice, a selection on the night. Um, and knowing that this was going to be not an easy journey, it got all the worse with the delay. And, and I, I felt I needed some, some different characters in the group. All right, we will go on with, another, with a question from Tim Sullivan uh, from Fort Glass and Country. Gary, when you see Dan get a one-on-one -on -one with Luis Robles at the end there, do your eyes get big? And, and what's your reaction when you see such a golden chance just barely missed like that? Well, look, you know, it's the easiest one to pick out because of, of the clear-cut nature of it. But I, I did think that there were two or three others. I know that... Um, Drake's mentioned, I think it was Drake who mentioned that the, the corner um, or, or the set piece that Hanny did well a couple of times. You know, there have been some, some really nice moments that we haven't converted again. Um, 
you know, it, it's been the Achilles heel for this team. We've had 16 efforts at goal tonight away from home. And we've only hit the target four times. You know, not only is it a problem not scoring, it's a problem hitting the target as well. So, you know, this is an ongoing, um, you know, problem for our group. I only, I only know two ways of, of trying to correct that. One is you change the bodies. The second one is you work ever so hard at it. And we're working ever so hard at it. And my hope is at some point we see the reward for that. We have one more question from Ben Wright with the Speedway Soccer. Ben? Yeah, Gary, it felt like um, the first stages of the, of the first half, you again had a slow start similar to Orlando and then really towards the end of the half and coming out of the break, um, it, it looked a lot better, especially um, in, the, in the final third, um, creating chances. Do you feel like there were any common threads between tonight and Orlando or it was just um, an anomaly? I, you know, I, I can't get inside the players' heads, but I would say quite simply fatigue. You know, how many teams have you seen go away now? We're starting to get into the thick of this schedule. And teams are playing Sunday, Wednesday, Saturday, you know, week after week. And the fatigue's setting in. And, you know, you throw in a, a, an hour and a half flight. You throw into it an early morning start. You know, you, you have all the difficulties of travel and, and, and the problems of playing away from home against the team. Come on, let's... let's We've got, you know, a wealth of talent in the other team. And, and, you know, this is a terrific point. I think the fact that we're all, you know, disturbed, frustrated and, and uh, upset that we haven't won this or at least scored a goal, which would have won it in the end, you know, tells us a story. Um, and listen, I expect at some point in the game, the guys are just going to come off of that high tempo, high energy and competitive game that they play. And, and we, yeah, we didn't start brightly. They, they were out of the traps quicker. Um, we did get a little bit fortunate. But beyond that, I thought for large portions of the game, we very much held our own, if not created some of the best chances um, or as many good chances as they did away from home. I'm not going to criticise the players at all. They're given everything they've got. We have a follow-up question from Drake Hill. Gary, because of that, because of the start and stop, the constant travel on the same day, you don't have that anymore now, at least for this upcoming week. As of what we know right now, National C is going to play Atlanta at home, and that's what the focus is. And not having in any midweek fixture, how much of a benefit is that to you for the, as a staff member, but also for the players? Huge. It, uh, listen, you, you, would not, you would not even believe the amount of discussion about the break, about some rest, about the opportunity to regroup emotionally and physically, to be you know, in a position where we can choose to have some recovery time, some build-up time, some, some work on the training field, as, as heavy or as light as we want it to be, and have a week that looks, you know, somewhat normal for, for this group. And I'm sure any team that's dealing with the schedule in the same way we are is, is thinking exactly the same thing. These players have now played five out of seven games in 25 days away from home. It's tough. Really tough. You know, nobody in this country, as far as I know, have, have ever had fly on the day of the game as much as the teams are doing right now. And you're seeing some strange results because of it. It's not, it's not easy. So it's going to be great to have some days at home. It's going to be great to get some rest. And I would hope that emotionally and physically we come back much fresher. We have another follow-up question this time from David Shepard. Gary, we saw Taylor Washington come on in a more advanced role tonight. Can you talk a little bit, uh, not just about his performance, though, feel free to offer some color there, but, but more about uh, the selection and moving him forward out of fullback into a wing? 
the, the, main, the main thought process around it was that Taylor's a very different player to one or two of the attacking guys that we know. But he's quick, he's competitive, he, he's got abilities in his game that lend themselves the, 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 the determination and, and the fiber that you sometimes need in difficult surroundings against a very, very talented team. And I felt as though those qualities were going to be needed tonight. And I also thought that the Taylor's performance was exactly what I expected. It was full of energy. It was full of passion and desire. And we needed players tonight at the end of this long, you know, five out of seven away games in a short period of time. I needed players going on the field that were going to lift the others. They were going to help morale. Not necessarily the most gifted, but individuals that were going to, you know, really roll their sleeves up and do their very utmost to get whatever they could out of this game. And they did exactly that. We have time for one more question for Coach, and uh, this will come from Ben Wright. Yeah, Gary, after um, Hani Mokhtar's assist um, midweek and then uh, what I thought was a, a pretty influential performance, especially in the second half, how, how encouraged are you by him and just his, his recent displays? Delighted. It, it, it was, for me, uh, like you've just mentioned, one of his most influential performances. He looked like the Hani I'd seen in those first couple of games of the season. You know, he'd shaken off some of those shackles of, um, the moratorium and, and being unable to, to compete and work at a competitive level. And he looks to me like he's, he's getting back to his old self. He looked brighter. He looked, he looked like he was a catalyst for some of the work and a lot of the work that we had in possession. And just as importantly, he found himself in some good shooting and, uh, and, and creative positions. And, and that's exactly what we need out of him. Thank you, Coach. Thank you for your time. We will be bringing Alex Thank Noel you. and Joe Willis uh, onto the podium. So, and time for a couple of minutes, please. Thank you. Uh, here with us, we have goalkeeper Joe Willis and the midfielder Alex Noel. Uh, Joe, we'll start with you. Congratulations for uh, shout outs uh, now with Nashville. Uh, tell us about how you were able to accomplish that today. Um, yeah, I think we came into this game knowing that. Uh, we could get a lot out of it if we were compact in the back and um, getting a, a clean sheet is is the foundation for uh, getting points in this league. So um, we came into it, like I said, knowing that if we could at least give ourselves a chance, then then the attacking players would create chances for us. So, um, you know, I think we were very organized and dealt with their uh, – more dynamic players really well. Uh, a lot of good defensive plays and um, yeah. Thank you, Joe. Alex, another start for you with the with the team. How are you adjusting and uh, what, what are your thoughts on today's performance? Yeah, I think um, for me, you know, a third start in um, in a week or so is, is good. Obviously, I think I still need to improve a lot, keep a lot more balls, but I think uh, ultimately the team is, is, is coming together really nicely. Obviously, like Joe said, another shutout. And it's never easy on the road, especially this year when you have the travel day of the game. But, you know, I think we're not trying to make any excuses. And, and we want to, you know, come on the road and, and expect to get three points. So we have to build in that direction. And, and hopefully we can uh, take a lesson from tonight and apply them moving forward. Thank you. We will now open the floor for questions. Uh, so please continue to alert me through the chat. We will begin with a question from Tim Sullivan uh, for you, Joe. Joe, I know keepers often like to get involved early in the game to kind of get into a groove. But um, when you kind of see a couple of the really, really uh, enticing chances for Miami early in the game, uh, does, that, does that almost rattle you a little bit? Or does it kind of help you get into that groove? No, it definitely helps you get into it. Um, I, I like to get my hands on the ball early in the game. Kind of gets you tuned in. Um, I, I've said it before, but it's you have to stay focused for 90 minutes. And, and when there's not a lot of action, you have to force it. But when there's action, you know, it, it kind of comes naturally. So I prefer to, to be involved more so than, than to just be standing back there uh, by myself. So I, I, I like to 
you know, like I said, get, get my hands on the ball early. We will go on for a question for you, Alex, uh, from Ray Hills with the Tunisia. David Shepard. Alex, I mean, there was a, I think it was earlier in the first half where I think you got a clean tackle, a pretty textbook tackle off of Nico Fogal and stole the ball, which really started like an opportunity to score at least a counter and in a dangerous area for you guys. Do you think that that could be somewhat of a contribution or a new brand for Nashville to have a player like you that could get in, get a tackle, um, repossess the ball in a dangerous area to start some way it could be a scoring chance for Nashville, maybe further up the field as opposed to building out of the back. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's always uh, the higher up you, you win the ball, the, the shorter the distance to goal, and, and that's always going to make it easier to score. Um, I think for us, you know, in games, especially early, we're pressing and, and we're creating opportunities out of it. So as long as we continue to do that, um, I think goals are going to come. You know, we're, we've shown we're comfortable to, to sit back and absorb pressure and then break out of that. But uh, to add to our game, uh, you know, a little bit of a higher press will, will definitely, you know, lead to more goals for us and also lead to us uh, having more control of the game. We have one more question for you, actually, Alex, and this time will come from David Shepard with um, Speedway Soccer. Alex, it's a bit different of a start from uh, some of the early games you've had with the club where it was uh, Nashville on the attacking foot, maybe not um, performing, scoring the goals that uh, you, you should be scoring otherwise. Was it a little bit different to kind of get used to that soaking in the chances, doing the defensive work on the front end tonight? And then how do you as a player like to kind of build off that in the game and start to get involved offensively? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, with three games in a week uh, and then having to travel and come down here, you know, it's going to be a game that, that maybe you're not on the front foot. And for us, obviously, we, we, we were able to absorb some pressure to have some early chances. Um, and I think, you know, for us, we grew into the game. And, and I think that's something that, while we're, you know, obviously we want the three points, we also have to take a realistic look, which is, you know, the last three games were unbeaten, where uh, we've only conceded one goal. Joe has done amazing at keeping us in games, and, and we're creating chances. So I think we can look at this and, 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 and know that we have something here, a foundation that, you know, we're moving in the right direction. And, you know, for us, of course, it's never going to be uh, every game that we're dominating, but we have to be able to get something out of these games. So we'll go on for a question now for you, Joe, uh, this time from Greg Hills with the Tennessee Joe, is it safe to say that maybe this match in terms of the communication and like how you saw the back line perform against pressure, especially when Miami was on the front foot early in the first half, at some point sporadically in the second half, was just your communication and the way that you were interacting and how the back line performed by your standards was a bit different as opposed to maybe the last time against Miami and uh, the couple of times against Orlando? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say so. I think communication is always important. Um, I try to, you know, be as vocal as I can and, and get guys in the right spots. Uh, when you have an empty stadium, it's a lot easier because uh, guys can actually hear you. That being said, we have a lot of veteran defenders. Um, and even though Alistair's young, he, he's a very smart defender. So for the most part, you know, they know where they need to be. They know the plays they need to make. I'm just there to kind of help them if I, if I see something that they don't. Um, but like I said, communication is always a big part of, of keeping the team organized. Um, and as a goalkeeper, I, I have a, a vantage point of the entire field. So, um, you know, I think it's important for any goalkeeper to, to use their voice as much as possible. We will, uh, we will go back now to you, Alex, uh, with a question from Tim Sullivan uh, with for Club and Country. Uh, Alex, Gary has expressed frustration in the last couple games about um, an inability for the team to really uh, test the goalkeeper, I guess, other than the obvious answer of kick ball at net. How can you on an individual basis kind of open up some of that offense and make it a little bit more effective? Uh, I think, you know, for, for the attacking players, obviously when goals aren't going in, you start to lose confidence. So for us, I think we just need to continue doing what we're doing. The most important thing is to create chances. That's the hardest thing to do. And once you, uh, once you start scoring, they're going to come a lot easier. So I think for us, it's just going to be uh, keeping our heads down, staying positive, and, and continue to do the things we're doing. We're creating a lot. Uh, we just need to put them away. Um, and I think uh, once we do, I think it will just start coming in bunches. We will conclude uh, today's availability with a question for both of you uh, from Ben Wright. Ben? 
Yeah, guys, after just a crazy couple of weeks, how huge will it be to not only have a week off before your next match, but then to not have to, to deal with the travel and everything um, on, on, on Saturday? Yeah, it's, it's huge. Um, you know, we knew coming into this phase one of the new schedule that it was going to be a lot of games in a short amount of time. So uh, to, to see a whole week um, between games is, is a blessing for sure. I know a lot of the guys are, are going to relish the, the time off to get their bodies right and, and prepare for the next game. I think we'll be able to get some real training in too um, and, and get some good recovery. And, and like you said, we'll, we'll have a home game at the end of the week. So um, we've only had like two of those so far. So uh, it'll be it'll be a nice change of pace for sure. And, and you know, hopefully we can keep some of this good momentum going. Yeah, I mean, I just echo all of that. You know, it's going to be good for us to get our bodies back. You know, these three games have definitely taken some uh, some wear and tear on us. I think we've actually done very well, though, in terms of being able to match the physical side of the game. So it's going to be good to get a week and, and come back at it on Saturday and, and you know, get this thing going again. Thank you both. Uh, congratulations on, to the, on today's result, and uh, we'll see you again in a week. And uh, thank you.